right, so you know that you might need to do better on your budgeting or whatever, but did you know that maybe it's not all your fault? What? There might be some beliefs that you have that are limiting you and you don't even know it. But you're in luck. After you watch this video, you'll be able to say, Got some money up in here. Probably have 2,000 billion money in the bank. Rich. Keep it locked. This crystal with the cash compass. Alright, so welcome or welcome back. Please make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any of this good content. I teach you what the schools should have taught you, but they don't. And I'll also cut to the chase. So let's start with number one. Something you might have been taught when you were younger are that credit cards are for emergencies. That's got to be the worst financial advice I've ever heard. And trust me, I've heard this from multiple people. Yikes. Credit cards are not for emergencies. Credit cards are for credit building. Yeah, I get it. It's, it's in the name. Your savings is for emergencies. Please do not think that you should use a credit card in time of need. That is a terrible mindset to have because if you are already in a financial bind, adding debt onto that at a high interest rate is no better. It may feel better because you're making little payments, but you're honestly eating away at your net worth and it will keep you poor. You will never get out of that hamster wheel of brokenness. The general consensus is to have at least a thousand dollars of savings just in case of an emergency. But you know, analyze your situation and see uh, what comes up that you think you need to save up for and then you can shoot for that amount. But the goal is to always have more than a thousand dollars, right? You can have a travel savings, you can have an emergency savings, you can have an, inv an investing savings, money you're saving to make investments. Which if you don't know about the different asset classes, click this video up here and it will give you everything that you need to know. So please get into the habit of putting money to the side to save for these emergencies. Please pay yourself first. I don't care what anybody else says. Your bills are not more important than you. If you have great money management skills, then you can use credit cards to not only build your credit, but take advantage of their cash back, their extended warranties. Credit cards have a lot of perks, so when used wisely, it is your greatest weapon. The next mentality is you need to go to school to have a good job. Now, this is not to discourage anybody from going to college or to encourage anybody from just sitting around at home, but this idea is just grossly wrong. Our society has raised us to be workers. Go to school, get a good job, work for a company forever. Our schooling system has been the same for centuries. Don't we need a reform? It's not all about just getting a nine to five, okay? And if you wanna do that, that's fine. I still do that. But you have to understand that there's other things that you can do and you should do to create more income sources. And sometimes, depending on what your career is, you might be going to school and you're giving up the experience that you could have been getting that would actually make you earn even more money. I have a video posted on top careers without a degree that do pay well, so click the link. But if you're somebody who's an entrepreneur, maybe you could spend those four years focusing on your craft, networking, and building a good relationship with your market. I think it's not talked about enough to evaluate opportunity costs. And opportunity costs is basically, what are you giving up to go pursue whatever else it is? So in this situation, if you're going to college, what are you gonna give up? Can you quantify that? How much money would you have been making had you not gone to college? And if you can answer those questions, I think that's really important before you determine that you're gonna go to school and get into mountains of debt. If you're not gonna get into debt, then I mean, more power to you, definitely go. I had a great college experience, so I'm not saying don't go, but my return on my investment was very good. So think of your student loans and the debt you're gonna go into for this degree as an investment. Are you gonna get a good return or are you gonna find yourself drowning in debt and not able to climb out of it? The third mentality that I think everybody is guilty of is that treat yourself fallacy. Yes, you should treat yourself, but if you're treating yourself every single week, that's not a treat, that's a routine. And on top of that, a lot of times the treat yourself mentality is applying to actually treating other people. Let me explain what I mean. When I say you're treating other people, it's the designer bags, the, the nice expensive sneakers, that new Apple product. You're not treating yourself, you're treating Apple, Nike, and Louis Vuitton, okay? And a real treat to yourself is something that's gonna actually help you in the long run, not just be flashy. And obviously this is my opinion, Feel free to disagree with me in the comments. But I really feel like that treat yourself idea has been reduced to just buying expensive trips or buying expensive material items that don't really hold a lot of weight in your life and that you won't really thank yourself for later, 
right? When I give myself a treat, I like to think of it as, okay, I saved up all this money and now I'm gonna go buy me a nice house. That's a treat. A house that is income producing or whatever other asset you wanna invest in. Like that to me is a real treat. Something that's gonna actually help you and build you up. No one's saying you cannot buy these things. Sure, why not? It's just not a treat to you. Remember that, it's a treat to these companies. Number four is your 401k is your best option for retirement. And I have touched on this before, but it's, it's worth repeating. Your 401k is not your only option. I have a video on all your asset classes. Please do not feel like all you have to do is invest in a 401k and go about your day. Like I've said before, they don't have any duty to you. They can go and buy something for you. It may not be in your best interest, but they collect their money and they're out the door. When you're left dead, broken, naked, guess what? There's nothing you can do because you agreed to it. It's in your contract that I know you didn't read. The stock market isn't the only way we invest. I know it's the only thing you hear about, but that's pretty much intentional. I mean, this is the most profitable thing that you can invest in. If you're investing in physical assets like gold or silver or a house, nobody can really make money off of that. So that's why you don't really hear it being pushed as often, but it's a very viable option. Number five is that passive income exists. <sighs> yes you know in government terms it can be considered passive income but there is no such thing as passive income this world changes so rapidly one minute this could have been a good investment and the next thing you know it's the very same thing that's making you broke so please don't think you can just set it and forget it that's the worst thing you can do for your financial well-being it's only passive to an extent even with stocks and bonds you don't want to buy a stock if you if the company is not performing well you have to continually analyze what you have invested in and see if you have to make a shift and reallocate your portfolio same thing when it comes to buying a house i mean are you charging the right amount of rent does it make more sense to do a short-term rental over a long-term rental there's things you have to continuously think about so it's not always just a let me rest in paradise and mind my business. What might be relevant now may not be relevant in the future. So back then, BlackBerry was popping, but now you ask a 13 year old what's a BlackBerry and they don't know. Look, you could be irrelevant like that. So you have to constantly keep up with the times. And here's a bonus if you say to the end, you can't say no. I think a lot of us have been trained to feel bad about saying no. No, I won't borrow the money. No, I can't go to this event. No, I won't catch flights not feelings with you. But you have to be able to say no. If you do not say no, you're going to say yes to a life of being broke. Damn, that was deep. All right, that is all for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you can get all my notifications because if you're going to be online, you might as well be learning things that you have not been taught. That is all for this video. As always, keep your money up.